Poly A polymerase plays a vital role in RNA biology, particularly in messenger RNA post transcriptional modification. Now that was a mouthful, but what does this all actually mean? Ribonucleic acid, or RNA, is synthesized from DNA through transcription, where an enzyme RNA polymerase reads the DNA code, crafting mRNA using the nucleotide uracil instead of thymine. This mRNA carries genetic instructions from DNA to the ribosome, serving as a template for protein synthesis, a fundamental process in living organisms. In this intricate journey, polyadenylate polymerase, or poly A polymerase, is a key protagonist. After DNA becomes pre-mRNA, poly A polymerase steps in to facilitate the critical makeover of mRNA known as polyadenylation. This is where a string of adenosine monophosphate units are added to the 3' end of mRNA, forming a poly A tail. This enzyme relies on the presence of magnesium ions, ATP as its substrate, and any RNA containing 3' hydroxyl termini as a primer. But how did we discover such a small yet crucial enzyme? Let's trace the key milestones in poly A polymerase and mRNA polyadenylation discovery. Travelling a few years back to the mid-1950s, we didn't know the identity of enzymes capable of synthesising polynucleotides and RNA in cells. Although, the presence of the unique structure was noticed, characterised as a tract of adenosine monophosphate units at the 3' end of a eukaryotic mRNA. However, the existence of such molecule left researchers puzzled. Introducing polyadenylation activity, first observed more than 65 years ago, where Mary Edmonds and colleague Richard Abrams stumbled upon the uncharacterised poly A polymerase in thymus nuclei that required no DNA template, a discovery described as a landmark of molecular biology. Their goal was to identify the enzymes behind RNA synthesis in mammalian cells, playing a crucial role in catalyzing the incorporation of ATP into polynucleotides. So they isolated and purified the enzymes a hundredfold, enhancing their synthesis capability for polynucleotides from calf thymus nuclei extracts. After, they prepared RNA from a crude enzyme solution, carefully adjusting pH levels using a potassium phosphate buffer for the perfect environment and employing centrifuge methods. The polynucleotide was then subjected to hydrolysis using both alkali and snake venom desesterase. The alkali treatment cleaved nucleotide bonds, effectively breaking down the polynucleotide into individual components, while snake venom accelerated this process. They also incorporated C14, a radioactive isotope, to track the polynucleotide's involvement. ATP units were then added between nucleotides to create the poly A tail during synthesis, known as the internucleotide incorporation mechanism. Results from this experiment indicated comparable amounts of C14 recovered in both conditions, confirming that ATP served as a precursor in synthesizing a polynucleotide linked by phosphatizer bonds. Further investigating ATP, enzyme fractions underwent hydrolysis breaking molecular bonds. Enzyme assays were conducted with specific nucleoside triphosphates of either adenosine, cytidine, uridine or guanosine triphosphate. Results confirmed the enzyme's pronounced affinity for ATP, while GDP, CTP and UTP all inhibited ATP uptake, decreasing efficiency in utilising ATP for polynucleotide synthesis. Regarding the enzyme's optimal conditions, they also found that manipulating the magnesium ion to ATP concentration ratios affected the enzyme. An excess or deficiency of magnesium ions inhibited the reaction, highlighting their significance as cofactors. So similar to poly A polymerase, the enzyme they explored ticked these attributes utilised ATP as the primary substrate, required a balanced ratio of magnesium ions to ATP, but the requirement for a primer was not yet established. The pair later confirmed the natural presence of polyadenylate in calf thymus nuclei using a primer isolated from purified ATP polymerase. They believed that this was likely the product of the enzyme activity they discovered three years earlier, and their hunch was right. Following this, Edmonds isolated adenosine-rich polynucleotides, finding them both in cellular and viral RNAs. In 1973, Winters and Edmonds purified poly A polymerase from calf thymus tissue, confirming the characteristics of poly A polymerase enzyme, adding poly A tails to eukaryotic mRNAs. However, it wasn't until 1976 that the functional significance of the poly A tail in eukaryotic mRNA was uncovered, as Van Kettison and colleagues discovered its role as a binding site for molecular regulators of translation, RNA stability and transport. We now know in greater detail that the adenosine string on mRNA plays important roles, such as ensuring mRNA's long-term usability and protecting it from degradation, acting as a recognition signal for ribosomes, indicating that mRNA is prepared for transport from the cell nucleus into the cytoplasm for translation to occur, and longer poly A tails are also associated with more effective translation, providing more binding sites for regulatory proteins.
So, over the course of more than two decades, researchers have unveiled the complex role of this enzyme, with new findings continually emerging about polyadenylate polymerase. As we explore the intricate world of RNA biology, we uncover the multi-faced functions of these seamlessly simple strings of adenosine units in gene regulation. Thank you.